And let's just, let's do this. Okay, nerves, the nerve structures in the lower limb of the human body. This is going to complete it. If you know all five elements, you know a lower limb. Somebody comes to you with an injury in their lower limb, and you know where the bones are, you know where the joints are, you know where the muscles are. You're familiar with the blood vessels and the nerves. These are the structures. Put skin on it, and you've got one part of the human body. Now, just let's go through a, just a brief thing with the nervous system, okay? We talk about the nervous system. We're talking about a couple of organs and a lot of long, thread-like strands. There's, of course, the brain, right? And you'd, you know where the brain is. There's a spinal cord. Spinal cord runs down through the vertebral column. These are the two major organs of the nervous system. But along with these two organs, there are all these nerves that course out through the body. One set of nerves are called the cranial nerves. And they're called that because they come directly out of the brain. The brain itself has some nerves, but most of them, not all of them, but most of them are just right in and around the head. The nerves that come out of the spinal cord, ones, and you can see in the picture, see all these little yellow things projecting out there? They're cut short but those are what we call spinal nerves, spinal nerves. Our focus here in the lower limb is gonna be these spinal nerves. They come out of the spinal cord. We're gonna focus right here because these are the nerves that ultimately migrate out and attach to structures in the lower limb. Now, the inferior part the lower part of the spinal nerves, the ones that are illustrated here, you can see the hip and the torso here. These are known as the lumbosacral plexus of nerves. Lumbosacral plexus. And let's get kind of a, a bigger view of that. Here's, here's an image that kind of without any muscle or anything else around, you can see that these nerves go all over the place through your hips, down into your thigh, through your leg, down into your foot, any muscle that's going to move is going to have a connection to a nerve so that the brain can tell it when to move in a coordinated way. Now, we're going to focus right here where the nerves come right out of the vertebral column. And that's this next picture that we're going to look at. This is a picture from your textbook that shows the lumbosacral plexus. So the inferior segment of spinal nerves. Um, one of the things to get right away is that every spinal nerve has a little name to it. And the name here like L5, L4, L3, does that remind you of something? The vertebra, right? That's how we name the vertebra. Well, since each nerve comes out from under, comes through a little hole out from under each vertebra, the nerves are associated with the vertebra with the same kind of name. It could create some confusion because there's an L4 vertebra and there's an L4 nerve, right? As long as you know whether you're talking about bones or talking about nerves, you're okay. But each and every one is labeled there. Now, um, this lumbosacral plexus, you notice that lumbosacral word is kind of a combination word, isn't it? It's got the word lumbar in it and the word sacral in it. We can take this, all of this group of nerves here and divide it into two groups. See how there's just one tiny little connection here, but otherwise this is sort of one group and this is another. You see that? So we're going to distinguish now the two groups from one another. The lumbar plexus is this group of nerves, okay, right there. And the sacral plexus then is this group of nerves right here. Okay, so make sure that you know these two groups. What should you know about them? You should know which spinal nerves make up each one of these plexi. And a plexus... Um, in Latin, that means a weaving, like if somebody weaves some cloth or weaves a rug. 
And notice how the spinal nerves just don't come out by themselves and then meander somewhere. See how they branch and then connect and branch and connect like a weaving? That's whenever you see this, looks kind of you know complicated here. Whenever you see this sort of weaving of nerves, that's known as a plexus. So there's a lumbar weaving up here and a sacral weaving here. Make sure you know the roots. Um, I'm going to call the lumbar plexus L1 to L4. L1 to L4. We're going to call the sacral plexus L5 to S4. This is going off somewhere else here. So L5 to S4. You can hear a question, can't you? You know, what spinal nerves form the lumbar plexus? L1 to L4, L1 to L5, L3 to S3. You know, so make sure that you could identify which nerve, spinal nerves, are forming which plexus. Okay? Let's make sure you can do that. Okay. Now, along with knowing the names of each plexus here and knowing which nerves form them, each one of these plexi here form two very important nerves. So there's really going to be four major nerves in here that I want you to know. Two here and two here. You should be able to pick them out on the picture. We're going to use these extensively when we talk about what nerves are connected to which muscles. So let's look at these. In the lumbar plexus here, let's identify the femoral nerve. The femoral nerve is this large nerve that is formed by the plexus. Now, does anybody remember the femoral nerve? Remember it in the cat? We found the femoral nerve. It came out from between two muscles. Do you remember the two? Soas major, exactly. Iliacus soas major had the femoral nerve coming right out from between them. This femoral nerve is formed by the lumbar plexus. The other nerve in the lumbar plexus that you should know is called the obturator nerve, and it's the one just inferior to that here, the obturator nerve. Could anybody guess where that's going? <laughs> Do you remember the obturator artery and the obturator vein? Go through the, well, there's an obturator nerve that goes right with them. Just about everywhere you have an artery and a vein traveling in the human body, there's typically a nerve running right along with them. Something in our DNA that builds those blood vessels and nerves so they travel together through the spaces of the body. So, two nerves that you should be able to associate with the lumbar plexus. Can you see the question? What are the two nerves that are associated with the lumbar plexus or formed by the lumbar plexus? You should be able to pick them out. All right. Now, there's a sacral plexus here, too. Two major nerves that you should know here. Okay? First one is called the common peroneal or common fibular. Now, this is, this is one of the few terms here that's in transition. And a good anatomy student of today must know both words. This is the older term. If you went to work right now and you were talking about things on the lateral side of the leg area of the human body, people that you work with would know the term peroneal as meaning the lateral side of the leg. The anatomical association of the world that you know, has a bunch of representatives, they agree on what everything should be called, has begun to shift us from using the word peroneal to the word fibular. Now that sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Because we use the bones to name things. And the bone on the lateral side of the leg is the fibula. So I'm, I'm not sure where the term peroneal came from, but it is always used exactly like you would use the word fibular, meaning the lateral, over here on the lateral side of the leg. There are peroneal arteries, peroneal veins, peroneal nerves, peroneal muscles, and those are all fibular arteries, fibular veins, fibular nerves, and fibular muscles these days. In my class, you can use either one. 
And fibular is probably the easier one to use, which I think is why they're changing the name. Fibular tells you, if you know the bones, it's in this one place. Peroneal could kind of be anywhere if you didn't know. But if you use the word fibular, which is the easier, please file away in your brain somewhere that peroneal is the exact same meaning, just a different word. Because it, it may come up in conversation or in a medical situation someday, and you want to make sure you know that. So we're going to call this common peroneal. Now, if it says common, what do you know about this nerve? Yeah, it's going to branch. And the two new branches are going to both have the peroneal or fibular name. We'll see that in just a little bit. The second nerve here in the sacral plexus that you should know is called the tibial nerve. Well, that makes it pretty easy, right? I got a fibular nerve and a tibial nerve. Guess where those nerves are going to? They're going to the leg, right? These two nerves are going to do almost everything in the leg and the foot. These lumbar nerves up here, the nerves up in the lumbar plexus, kind of stay in the hip and thigh area. These sacral plexus nerves are on their way to the leg and the foot. Now, one last very important naming thing here. Um, in fact, some of you might know this. I've left out a very, very important nerve name that's in and around the hip. People often have problems with this nerve as they get older. Yeah, sciatic, right? If you've ever heard of the sciatic nerve, there really isn't any one nerve called the sciatic. There is, but the sciatic nerve is two nerves, right? All it is is these two nerves get a layer of connective tissue around them and it bundles them together while they're traveling through the hip and the thigh. When they come to the end of the thigh here before they go into the leg, then they divide back apart again. They come apart again, right? Look at your list here. Do you see anywhere in here where it says sciatic nerve? Look, look down the nerve column. Do you see the word sciatic nerve here anywhere? No, you don't. Because the sciatic nerve is just kind of an artificial thing. It's the tibial and common peroneal nerve just connected, bundled together with a little connective tissue as they travel through the hip and the thigh. When they come to the leg, they come apart. You are going to see this in the cat, exactly this in the cat. Okay, so, so make sure you're familiar with that. I, almost every time I give a test, I'm going to ask that, right? What are the two nerves that make up the sciatic? Okay, make sure you know those. Now, as I said before, the, what, what I've just showed you is all the foundation for the nerves that work the muscles here. But what I want you to be able to do is attach those nerves to certain muscles, right? And so this column right here with all the nerve names, if you look down here, you see femoral, right? Femoral, femoral, obturator, common peroneal, tibial. You see these names we've been working with, don't you? I'm going to make those four nerves we just looked at the foundation of learning most of the muscle connections. Don't learn which muscle has which nerve. Learn which nerve has which muscles. Okay? Um, the other thing that you need to know about a nerve is a nerve is a two-way street. Nerves in your human body look like strings. They're actually cables. Um, I like to think of them kind of like a freeway or a highway because you're going to have traffic in two different directions, right? When you have a freeway, you've got lanes of traffic that are carrying people one direction, and you have separate lanes of traffic carrying people another direction. When you look at a nerve like this, cut open a nerve, you're going to see lots of bundles of little strands carrying signals. You can't tell from looking at this which ones are carrying traffic which direction. But literally, some of these bundles, like maybe these bundles, are carrying signals one direction, and these over here are carrying signals the other direction. But typically, nerves are mixed and have traffic running 
in both directions. So some of these are going to be nerve strands that carry signals from your brain to your muscles to cause them to work, right? And some of these strands are going to be carrying signals from your skin into your brain so that you know what you're feeling on your skin, right? So be aware that when we... I'm going to focus on which nerves are connected to which muscles, kind of this part up here. But you need to be aware, too, that anything sensational, any sensation coming from your lower limb is coming through these same nerves, but in different strands from the ones that are carrying signals to the muscles. Did I make that clear? You got that idea? Okay. Um, So with this lumbosacral plexus of nerves... Let's take these nerves one by one because these four nerves are about 90% of all the connections in the lower limb. Let's take these and look at them one at a time, please. So let's start with the femoral nerve. How am I going to learn the femoral nerve? Well, the femoral nerve here has two groups of muscles that it attaches to. And here's the easy way to learn this. Don't learn this muscle by muscle. Learn it group by group. Now, if you look at the picture, this picture is from your textbook. If you look at the names of the muscles that are connected into this nerve, like you'd see there, here's what you see. You're going to see iliacus and psoas major. And that stands to reason, doesn't it? Because the femoral nerve comes right out from between them, doesn't it? So it's going to tell psoas major and iliacus when to work. Now, it turns out that psoas major and iliacus make a group, don't they? What group do they make in your handout? Anterior compartment of the hip. Okay, now of the hip. Iliacus, psoas major, anterior compartment of the hip. Okay, now what's the other group of muscles? The other group of muscles, sartorius, rectus femoris, Vastus, vastus, vastus. Five muscles in one group. Which group? Anterior compartment of the thigh. So these two groups of muscles here, anterior compartment of the hip and the anterior compartment of the thigh are all handled by the femoral nerve. Now isn't that easier than trying to memorize seven different muscles? You see the groups? This is where, as you're learning your muscles, if you learn them in their groups, this nerve thing is going to be a lot easier than if you don't. If I I should be able to say to you, name the five muscles of the medial thigh. And you ought to be able to go bump, 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 bump. One, two, three, four, five. Name the four muscles of the posterior hip. Gluteus, 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 tensor fasciolat. If you know the muscles in group, Almost every nerve is attached into a group of muscles with only two exceptions. I'll show you the two. But you see, what's, what's the key word here? What's the common word between these two groups? Anterior. Yeah, it's anterior, isn't it? It's anterior. So two groups of muscles, the anterior hip and the anterior thigh, belong to the femoral nerve. You see how this is? If, if the question says to me on the test, the question says, what nerve attaches to the rectus femoris? I don't know. I didn't study that. But I know two things that will give me the answer. I know the rectus femoris is in the group called the anterior thigh. And I know that every muscle in the anterior thigh belongs to the femoral nerve. So by reasoning through two facts, I get the answer that I need. That's a lot easier than memorizing muscle by muscle which nerve is which. So keep this in mind. Now, one of the other things that you'll see here, I just spoke that nerves are two-way streets, aren't they? Right? So this also shows, you don't have to memorize this or know this, but it's interesting. It shows you which pieces of skin are taking their sensations back through the femoral nerve. So if you scratch your kneecap here, that's going back through the femoral nerve, right? Down here onto your leg a little bit and all the front part of your thigh. All of that skin sensation travels through the femoral nerve to get to the brain. Okay? So 
These, these segments of skin here are, are transmitting sensations through the femoral nerve. So the key word here again is what? Anterior, okay? Anterior is the key word when you think of the femoral nerve. All right, let's look at another nerve. Let's look at the obturator nerve now. This one's simpler. There's only one group of muscles here, just one group. And the obturator nerve is going down through the obturator foramen right into this area here. What do these muscles have in common? Adductor magnus, adductor, 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 gracilis. They're all in which group? The medial thigh. So this group is medial thigh. Okay? Now, one muscle is missing from my list in the medial thigh, isn't it? There's five muscles in the medial thigh, not four. Pectineus, right? Pectineus is the one that's missing, okay? Now, what I'm going to show you is that if you use these patterns, you can get 90% of your muscles in groups. There are going to be two exceptions. First exception is right here. The pectineus muscle should belong to which nerve? It should belong to... The obturator nerve, because I know the obturator nerve takes all the medial muscles. But instead, pectineus belongs to the femoral nerve. Okay, so that's an exception. If I go group by group, my anterior hip, anterior thigh are femoral. My medial thigh is obturator. This is the one exception, pectineus. So you just file that away. Learn your groups and just file away that one exception. Okay, so again, obturator nerve, medial thigh, um, just a tiny little bit of skin here, huh? Just a little bit of the medial skin on your thigh is that. What's the key word I'm going to put with the obturator nerve then? Medial, right? Key word here is medial, right? And that, that obturator foramen is very medial here. And the nerve is dropping right down. If I put my two obturator nerves right through those holes, see where they're going? Right into the medial compartment of the thigh. All right. Let's take, those were the two lumbar nerves. I'm the, yeah, the lumbar nerves, femoral and obturator. Let's take the two sacral nerves now. The two key nerves in the sacral area are tibial nerve and common fibular or common peroneal. Tibial. Okay, three groups. Here's a wonderful nerve. You can learn 10 muscles in one nerve if you know the three groups that this goes to. Know the muscles in the groups. Know which groups go to which nerve. You got it. Okay, what are the three? Bicep femoris, semimembranosus, semitendinosus. What group do they belong to? Which one? Posterior thigh, the posterior part of the thigh here is made up of those muscles, right? Uh, what other muscles do I see here? I see gastrocnemius, plantaris, and soleus. What group is that? Posterior, posterior leg. Uh-oh, I switched those. Uh-oh, that should be superficial. Okay, darn. I think I switched those because that was a shorter list, so I put there. This should say posterior leg, superficial, not deep. Okay. And then the other group is flexor digitorum longus, flexor hallucis longus, popliteus, tibialis posterior. All four muscles are in the posterior leg, deep. <laughs> Switch the deep and the superficial here in your thinking, right? But see my three groups? Posterior part of the thigh, posterior deep, and posterior superficial here in the leg. Right? So I get three groups with one nerve. Okay, three groups of muscle. Posterior thigh, posterior leg deep, posterior leg superficial. Okay, again, you can see that the, the skin here, 
the bottom part of the foot and sort of the outside of the top part of your foot is all here. Okay, what's the key word I'm gonna think of when I think of the tibial nerve? Posterior. And literally, literally, every, every muscle, posterior hip and posterior leg, every single muscle, if it's posterior, it's the tibial nerve, isn't it? That's a great one. It's a great one to learn. Okay, last nerve, common fibular nerve or common peroneal nerve. This is also called common peroneal. I wanted to make that point here, right? And it's going to divide into a superficial fibular nerve and a deep fibular nerve. And that's where you get this common into its two branches. Because it's fibular, I know it's going into the leg. How many compartments in the leg? Look at your pink handout. How many compartments in the leg? All together. All together. One, two, three. I got it separated into four compartments, right? Four compartments. We just figured out that the two posterior compartments, superficial and deep, belong to the tibial nerve. So how many nerves do I have here? Two. And I got two compartments left. Isn't that nice? Right? Okay, so I got two groups of muscles innervated by the deep and superficial fibular nerves. Right? Fibularis longus and fibularis brevis are in one group. What group is that? Which compartment? Right, lateral compartment of the leg. So there's two muscles here clustered around the fibula, the fibula, fibularis brevis and longus, right next to each other. They're in the lateral leg. They make a group. We call the lateral leg extensor digitorum longus, hallucis, tibialis anterior, fibularis tertius are all clustered where? What compartment? Anterior part of the leg. So each one of these takes one of these two, okay? And just lay it out this way. Two groups of muscles. The lateral leg takes the superficial fibular nerve, right? And the anterior leg takes the deep fibular nerve. No exceptions right in this area here. There is one exception between the tibial and common fibular nerves though. And it shows in the picture right here. The bicep femoris muscle actually has two parts to it, a long head and a short head. The long head part is what belongs to the tibial nerve. The short head part of the bicep femoris is, is innervated by the common fibular nerve. So short head of bicep femoris is the exception here. Since it's biceps femoris, it should be tibial nerve, but instead it's common fibular. So in the two nerves from the lumbar plexus, from, um, femoral and obturator, the exception is the pectineus muscle. In the sacral plexus between the tibial and common peroneal, the exception is the short head of the bicep femoris. <coughs> Again, you've got skin showing here, okay? So, that takes you through everything except for two groups. You can do eight out of 10 groups by grouping the muscles, learning the nerve for the group with two exceptions, the pectineus muscle and the short head of bicep femoris are the only exceptions. When you look back at the hip, the only thing we haven't looked at yet is right here, in the hip area. And this isn't too tough either if you use a little reasoning. Let me show you this. Here are the muscles in the hip area and what are they gonna be called? Gluteal nerves. Remember when we did the blood vessels? Right, there were two nerves there. 
All the posterior hip muscles here. Can you name the four posterior hip muscles? If you can, all of those come from here. There's a superior gluteal nerve and an inferior gluteal nerve right there. And they're down here in this sacral area. So two patterns to remember in the gluteal nerves. If you remember these two patterns, you'll get this very quickly. First of all, there's four muscles here. Can you name the four? What's this one right here? Okay. And what is this one over here? Gluteus medius, the one that's superficial. The deep one hiding under it is gluteus minimus. And then off here, a little more to the front is tensor fasciolata. You know these four are in the posterior hip group. Okay? Now here's your, two, here's your two rules for this. The gluteus maximus is as big a muscle as the other three put together. Does that stand to reason? Everybody agree with that? So the gluteus maximus gets its own nerve, and the other three are going to share a nerve. Is that logical? Okay? Good. The gluteus maximus is the lowest muscle of all four of these, right? And it gets its own nerve, right? So which nerve does a gluteus maximus muscle get? Right? The inferior gluteal nerve. And what nerve do the other three get to share? The superior gluteal nerve. Makes sense? See how that, that makes sense? You can reason that out and it works, right? The only thing left to do then is if you look at the deep the only thing left is if you look at the deep part, then you've got this piriformis and quadratus femoris here. And all you have to know is that they're just part of the sacral plexus. There's little tiny branches that come out for these. They aren't really specifically named branches for us. If you went into a heavy anatomy class, you'd get specific names there. But So that, that finishes up this, right? You've got these gluteal nerves here. Inferior for the maximus, the other three share. Sacral plexus is all you have to say for the two deep ones. Otherwise, everything falls in the groups here. Hopefully this makes sense to you. If you know your muscles in groups, that's part of your study, then picking up the nerves is not as tough as it could be. Okay? Any last questions about this? Okay, you've got, you've got all the information you need to study for the test. Quiz is on Friday, dissection is Friday, and then we're done.